This is the last section in the functions and graphs chapter, solving modulus problems. And um, yeah, there's nothing new here. Quite often you might want to draw a sketch so you can see uh, where the graphs uh, cross. Remember if you've got two graphs and um, let's say we've got a modulus graph like this. Let's say we have two modulus graphs. That's the original bit there. And let's say that this reflects up there. And let's say I've got another modulus graph. Um, and this one goes like this. Yeah, so the dotted line is like the original graph. I can see that there'll be two solutions here and here. This one, so let's call this f of x and this one g of x. So that first crossing point there where I've got the arrow, it's crossing on the original part of both those graphs. So to find that, I would solve f of x equals g of x. However, this point here is the original part of the purple graph, um, g of x, but the reflected part of g of x. So if I wanted to solve that, because it's the reflected part of f of x, I'd solve negative f of x, remember you put a negative sign in brackets, equals g of x. So sketches will help you. So we have a function t, and we want to sketch that function first of all. And we're going to do it in steps. So first of all, we're going to start with drawing a graph of x minus 1. So that is a graph that's going to cross at negative one, like this. And we're now gonna add the modulus to it, which means that bit below the axis you wanna flip up. So I'm just gonna draw this again, but put a dotted line like this. So this was negative one here. So that will be now crossing at one. Then all of that gets stretched in the y direction by three, because it's three times that. So now we can change those to three and negative three. Well, not negative three anymore because we're, we're not interested in the reflection anymore. And then the whole thing gets moved down by two. So I probably will need to um, draw it again down here. So if I move it down by two, it's now going to cross at one. And the bottom part of the V is going to be below the axis at negative two. Now we do need the the the, um, the points where maybe it crosses the axis and the uh, this vertex point at the bottom here. Now that would have been at one here, because if you make uh, this equal to zero, well, it's got to be x equal to one for it to work. So this point down here, it's gonna be a one there. Okay, um, do we need to know this one? Let's see if we can work that out. Well, we've got two points, haven't we here? So this is where the function is, is going to equal zero. So you've got three x minus one equals two. So that becomes x minus one equals two thirds. Now remember, I'm going to have two solutions here. One where that x minus one is positive. So you're going to have x minus one is two thirds, which will give us x equals two thirds plus um, one, which is five over three. And this one is gonna be when that x minus one is negative. So if we expand the brackets, we'll get, or if you move the minus across, we'll have x minus one equals negative two thirds 
which means that x equals negative 2 thirds plus 1, which is a third. So we have the coordinates of these points. So this one here is a third. This one here is 5 over 3, if we need them. Write part B. Uh, state the range of the function. Well, I can see that this function starts down here and goes up forever. So the range is going to be that t of x is greater than, is it greater than or equal to? Yes, greater than or equal to, because it does actually attach the axis in the original one. Greater than or equal to negative 2. And C rocks to solve uh, T of X equals a half X plus three. So we're now going to draw on our diagram the graph of half X plus three. So this is a line that slope, slopes up, crossing the axis at three. Remember, this isn't to scale. And um, it doesn't have the same steepness. It's half as steep. So actually, it's going to look something like this. Now, I need to extend this because you're going to see a crossing point here and a crossing point here. So for um, the crossing point on the right hand side, we need to solve um, our three x minus 1 minus 2 equal to um, half x plus 3 and since this point here is on the original part not the reflected part over here but the original part of this line um, we replace the bracket with a plus sign so we can actually just replace it with a bracket like that and solve this. So we've got 3x minus 3 minus 2 equals half x plus 3. Take away half x from both sides, or actually let's put these together. Take away half x from both sides, so you end up with 5 over 2x equals, add 5 to both sides, 8. So that means 8 uh, x equals 8 divided by 5 over 2, so 8 divided by 5 over 2 or 2 and a half, we end up with 16 over 5. Okay, so that's one solution here. And also the two graphs cross here. Um, and this is half x plus 3 and a reflected part of this t of x. So that's going to be um, 3. Now this time when we, we do the brackets, we replace it with brackets and a minus. So we can put the minus there. So minus 3x plus 3 minus 2 equals half x plus 3. So that's minus 3x minus 1 equals half x plus 3. Add 3x three to both sides. So we'll get 3.5, so 7 over 2x. Take away 3 from both sides equals negative 4. So x is going to equal negative 4 divided by 7 over 2. Divided by 7 over 2. And that gives us negative 8 over 7. Sorry guys, just realized negative uh, plus 3 minus 2 is actually plus 1. So now if I take away um, 3 from both sides, this becomes negative 2. Here we go, sorry about that. And now if I do negative 2 divided by 8 over 7, so 7 over uh, negative 2 
divided by 7 over 2 and I get negative 4 over 7 so that's what it should be sorry guys so negative 4 over 7 so these are the um, coordinates of the points or the x coordinates where these two lines cross right let's look at this one so they actually give us the graph this time um, and we want to state the range of f now this function I can see goes down forever because there's no limit on the value of x so I need to work out what this point is um, the peak of the graph so to do that we're actually going to look to see where this graph came from originally so we're going to start with the graph of x plus 3 which is going to be this crossing at 3 then we're going to turn it into modulus x plus 3 which means we're going to take that bit below the axis and we're going to flip it up so we end up with this uh, then after that we've got a negative 2 now what that negative 2 is going to do it's going to um, stretch it but also reflect it in the x-axis so it's the negative of the negative 2 does this and the 2 is going to do this so this now negative 6 now it looks like this is going to be the peak so we do need to work out what it was there in our first one so this point here and then we can work out what it is as when it gets well it's going to be the same in the one below um, so here this is where x plus 3 equals on a modulus of x plus 3 equals 0 it's on the x-axis so that means that x is equal to negative 3 so we can put negative 3 here and then the next thing we've got is 6 so the whole thing moves up by 6 so that's actually this here so if it moves up to 6 that means we've got 6 here and this was negative 3 from before so if we're going to state the range in part a the range of this function f of x is less than or equal to 6 all numbers less than or equal to 6 part b he says state with a reason why the inverse doesn't exist well the function that we have here is many to one because you've got for example um, these two different values of x go to one value of y so the original function is many to one so f of x is many to one now if you find the inverse everything gets flipped it's then going to become one to many and you can check that by looking at what that graph would look like if you reflected it in that line it would end up something like this it'd end up crossing the um, axis twice I think you'd end up with something like this I think and it's crossing the y-axis twice so that is uh, one to many one input here is going to two outputs that's not allowed okay so we could write down since f of x is many to one its inverse which is f to the minus one of x would be one to many which isn't a function so uh, the inverse 
does not exist. If we restricted the domain so that we didn't end up with this, so it wasn't many to one, just one to one, so if we chopped off a bit of the graph, we could find the inverse and we could make the inverse one to one if we chopped bits off, restricted the domain of the original function. Right, okay, C, solve the inequality, which is six minus two x plus three is greater than five. In a way, that's trying to work out what uh, these values are here. Yeah, greater than five, if we call this bit five. So what we're going to do is going to find the critical values by solving uh, it actually equal to five. And then we can then write our inequalities in that. So this will give us the critical values. What are these values here and here? So first, um, we'll take six away from both sides. Minus two X plus three. Um, so that's negative one. Uh, then we'll um, divide, divide both sides by negative two. So we'll have X plus three um, equals uh, a half. Now we just want the value or values of X that give us a half. Now to solve this, we can do this. So from this top one, if we took away three from both sides, we'd have X equals minus five over two. And if we do the same here, so that'd be negative X, let's write it down, negative X minus three equals a half. So that gives us negative X equals negative half plus three, which is five over two. So X equals negative five over two. Right, I've spotted my mistake here. Let's just go back. I expanded the brackets, used a negative, and then also put a negative on the other side, which I shouldn't have done. So sorry about that. This should be a half here. Yep. Um, then add the three to both sides. So X equals, um, or negative e X equals seven over two. So X equals negative seven over two. Sorry about that. So these are the critical values here and here. So the part where it's greater than five is between those. So we'll write our answers at inequality which is X is less than negative five over two and greater than negative seven over two. They're the two points basically here. So this is negative five over two. Here is negative seven over two and it's greater than five between those points. So here's our final answer. Should now be able to do exercise 2G on pages 51 to 53 and then go on and do the mixed exercise.